Yeah, hey guys, so this is the recap for If Loving Is Wrong, Season 4, Episode 7. And it starts off with... It starts off with Lucius coming home, and you have Natalie's good-for-nothing son there, and of course he has Fawn there, and so Fawn's freaking out, and he's just like, Yo, you gotta hide! Because at first, he's thinking that it's his mom, so then he hears Lucius, and it's like, Crap, that's no better! So, he's just like, alright, hide, hide, hide. So, I'm thinking to myself, girl, you better go and take that purse. <gasps> what are you thinking? What are you thinking? You better go and take that purse, because she goes and she initially leaves the purse. And on the couch. So, I'm like, what? Fawn, Fawn, come on now, because she tries to go out the back door. The back door is locked. I'm like, hello, of course the back door is locked. What the hell are you thinking? So she goes into his, uh, he goes into his little kids, his little kids, his brothers, his brother and sister's room. That's where Fawn goes to hide out. And so he's fondling with the door. He was just like, you know, I don't know how to open this thing. You know, Lucius is pissed because he's like, what the hell is wrong with you, boy? But it's like, damn, this is Joey we're talking about. So Joey is a little slow. So I guess he doesn't think too much of it. But he is essentially looking in the bread box and it's like, Okay, where is it? I'm like, yeah, where is it? Who could possibly touch it? I'm like, okay, did someone go in there and rob the place? Did someone go in there and case the joint and we just don't know about it? Because it makes absolutely no sense. We all saw Natalie putting it in that bread box. I'm like, damn, did one of the kids think that maybe it was like a treat or something and Natalie was hiding it? So Lucian was just like, you need to come home. You need to come home now because... I need that thing. And it's like, what do you need it for? It's like, I need it. It's like, okay, I get it. I'm like, I love this show, but this show is just like have and have nots where it's very repetitive sometimes. It's just like, really? Really? Does it need to be rep this repetitive sometimes? I get it's supposed to get on your nerves, but it's doing a little bit too much for me. After that, Natalie comes home because... Lucian goes and calls her and so she's like, you know what? I'm gonna borrow so-and-so's car. I'll be right there. So she gets there and she's looking it's just like where it is I guess maybe possibly the one of the kids took it. And I'm just surprised that they were like Joey Where is it? I'm surprised they weren't like that because this is Joey we're talking about so Joey is trying to stop his mom from going and looking in his siblings room and Joey's just like I already looked at the place I already looked at the place side note. I'm like Thankfully, he looks really young in the face because I'm like, we're supposed to believe Joey is what, like 18? We're really supposed to believe Joey's 18? Anyway, so, Natalie's just like, boy, if you don't get out of here, if you don't get out of here. So she's just looking and then she was like, whose shoe, whose foot is stepping out of my uh child's bedroom? So... She was like, Lucian, come in here. So Lucian draws his gun, and Joey's like, no, don't shoot, don't shoot. And Fawn was just like, oh, don't shoot, don't shoot. And it was just like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And though, and now it's just like, get out. Get out. Get out, little girl. You better get out. And I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like, damn. Fawn, why? And... Of course, she was going at Joey, uh, Natalie was going at Joey because she was like, so you want me to lose my job again? That's what you're trying to do. Little boy, I've already told you this multiple times, but you don't listen. You really want me to lose my job for everything to get messed up again so that you can finally learn this lesson of stop sleeping with the boss's daughter. Anyway, uh, what's his name? Jul Julius goes... To Randall's house and I'm like okay this is an episode of crazy versus crazy because Julius needs Randall to confirm okay Randall what's currently going on with my father and Randall's just like you need to talk with your father it's like what is going on with that woman Tilda yes I know she is uh, I just need you to confirm and Randall's just like you know I'm a lawyer we have a confidentiality agreement so you need to go and ask your father so Julius is just like I'm going to ask you this again. Who is that woman to my father? And then he was like, yeah, you're correct. She is the mistress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was like, okay, cool. Thank you. And I'm thinking to myself, Randall isn't scared, 
but I guess Randall's like, you know what? This guy's crazy, but he might technically be my boss within a matter of months, so I guess I gotta give up the information. And I'm just like, Randall's met his match when it comes to crazy. That's how I'm seeing it. And I'm not mad. See, Julius is, I mean, he's on a whole nother level, but again, I'm not mad at it because we have Randall's and all these people. So we go back to the apartment and Joey and Fawn are discussing what's currently going on. Fawn's just over it and Joey's just like, you know what, you're my friend, you're cool. And Fawn's just like, wait, a friend? So that's how you see me? And um, Joey was like, of course. It's like, yeah, that's how I've always seen you. Uh, and so Fawn was over it because that's exactly what Natalie told her. Fawn was thinking that Joey was madly in love, but that's not the case. That's not the case at all. Not at all. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that Randall was like, cause, um, what's his name? Uh, cause Julius was trying to find out about his sister, and Randall's like, well, the only one who knows about that is her mom, Tilda. And it was just like, okay, okay, understand, understood. So, yeah, I can't wait for Lucius and Tilda to have a, a matchup, like a real matchup, because they, meet, they keep meeting up in the hospital. I need them to meet out on the streets. Joey, speaking of being out on the streets, once Fawn leaves, you have Quan, who's just like, oh, well, you know, it's only a matter of time, Joey. I'm going to get that ass, Joey. And I'm going to get that sh- uh, ooh, excuse me. I'm going to get Fawn's ass, too. Just watch. It is only a matter of time. And there's nothing you can do about little Joey. There's nothing you could do about little Joey. Mmm, little Joey. And it's just, because Joey was acting buck. Joey's trying to act as if, oh, you know, I'm big and bad. Ain't no one gonna tell me anything. Ain't no one gonna come at me. And I'm just thinking, Joey. Joey! Let's think about this for a little bit. You are on parole, so you are trying to keep it cute. But at the end of the day, Quan is... He's butthurt because of the fact that his mom threatened him. Basically, everyone's been threatening him. So he sees you as a punching bag. So that's what he's going to do. Like I said, Natalie goes and talks to Joey. He's like, you know, I already got fired once. All this stuff already happened to me. And you're going and you're sleeping with the boss's daughter again? I thought you were smarter than that. No, this is you were talking about. So I guess that actually adds up. Just like, damn, Natalie. Lou, uh, Julian goes to the hospital and his father is knocked out right now. They gave him some good meds so he's knocked out. Uh, one of the family attorneys, the financial advisor lawyers people is there and he's just like, okay, so can we talk outside? Can we talk outside? And again, Julian confirms that Tilda, um, he's like, I know who Tilda is so just tell me the whole truth. And it's just like, okay, you're not gonna lie, just tell me. Okay, here's the thing. Tilda, your mom, and her daughter, they're getting everything. He's leaving everything to them. He's not leaving you with anything. You are crazy. You are crazy. You cannot be trusted. And that's what's going on. I'm just like, Tilda, don't come in that elevator. She came out at the wrong time because Joey just heard this. And he, I mean, um, Julius just heard this and he was ready to go off. And I'm thinking to myself, Tilda, you, you, you've met your match. Slow your roll, Tilda. Slow your roll. Slow your roll. And I, they were just essentially saying the same thing like I was saying. It's like, oh, you think you're big and mad? Oh, you think you're big and mad? It's like, meet me out on the streets and we'll see how it feels. And it's like, okay. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Julius was just like, he's going to be dead soon, so you better watch your back. And she was like, so what are you trying to say? And he was just like, I was like, oh. Did he just... And that's Tilda? And she just shot someone to prove a point to herself. Now, Tilda? Now, Julius? I think both of you have met your matches, so... I need for you two to back off a little bit, because at the end of the day... I, 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 I don't know if you two can really handle each other. Just saying. So, Kelly and Esperanza come up to... uh come up to, what's her face, 
Alex's recorded the, the baby sleeping because I'm like, wait a minute, the baby's been making that same face at the same time, and why does it look so grainy when they zoom in? So I'm like, all right, the baby is there knocked out, and they're using pre-recorded uh, videos to kind of showcase the cute little baby sleeping. I'm like, okay, I see you, Tyler. I wish that the video was clearer so that it actually matched up a little bit better. But all right, we'll give you a pass. This is a real baby, so you can never really predict how he'll act, especially if he's supposed to be like a newborn or something. Oh, so everyone's just talking about how, oh my gosh, Kelly, oh my gosh, Kelly, Kelly and Ramsey, Kelly and Ramsey. It's like, you know, Ramsey's good for you. He's so good for you. And um, it's just like, you know, I don't know. It's just like, he's going to be living out of state. And so there is that. And, uh, but so eventually show me the guy and all that. S. Raj is just like, okay, it needs to be Ra <coughs> Ramsey. And Alex is just like, you know, Ramsey definitely likes you. He's very protective of you. So, I don't know what's wrong with you, Kelly. I don't know what's wrong with you, Kelly. And Kelly goes and she flips the script. She's just like, Alex, I'm so proud of you. Because, you know, Alex fully accepts the fact that that's her baby and she loves her baby unconditionally. And Kelly's just like, you know, I'm so proud of you, Alex, because you stood up to Brad and you stood up to Randall. And it was so bossed because at the end of the day, that's the Alex that I remember. You weren't taking any mess from no one. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, uh, you're part of the issue, but Alex, and I'm glad that Alex was finally like, you know, this is my fault. And they were both trying to be like, no, no. I'm like, where is Natalie? Because Natalie would be honest and say, yes, yes, this is your fault. This is all of your fault. Because, uh, what's her face? Because Alex is just like, you know, at the end of the day, Randall's not getting anywhere near my son because Kelly was just like, you know, maybe if you have Randall come and see his child because it is his child too. And Alex's just like, no, I am a uh, mother bear. And if anyone comes to after mine, they're going to get it. Hook, line, sinker, they're just going to get it. And she kept repeating the same thing over and over again. I'm like, Tyler, I love you. I know it's for dramatic effect, but I'm not really feeling this drag out a scene for three or four minutes with using the same vernacular for a good three to four minutes. That's why I didn't go into details with Alex said because she just kept saying the same thing over and over again. And they also had the conversation about the kids of how the kids grow up so fast and when they're newborn it's just so cute but then things get really awkward because Alex is saying, gosh, things are going to be a mess. As was just like, her daughter asked her, oh, so where do babies come from? It was just like, um, I think she said, they come from people not reading. And so she just broke down hysterically and laughed for so much that her daughter was just like, okay, and walked away. And I thought Justice was old enough because I could have sworn that Justice was like the same age as Esperanza's daughter, but I guess not. So uh, Kelly was just like, yeah, oh, I'm terrified for when that day comes when Justice starts to ask those questions. I mean, for example, Justice's father, I hate him, but at the end of the day, at least... Um, the times that he wanted to be there, I made sure that he had the chance to be there. And that's how you do it, because let him decide for himself if he's going to be in his son's life. And if he's not, then screw him. But don't go and deny him, uh, deny your son possibly a possible relationship with the father. Because you never know. You really never know how that could turn out. Most of the time you do, but just in case. Just in case. And, uh... Esperanza was just like, gosh, I wish I could see it better when, as far as Eddie, I wish I could see that coming. I'm just like, Esperanza, we get it. Eddie was a different person before the war or whatever, and he's been crazy ever since. We get it. We understand. But you need to get over him. That's what they were saying. She was just like, I am. I am. Yeah, you got over him by getting under Julius, and that wasn't any better. But out, because, um, so, Kelly's just like, maybe if Ramsey sees, Randall sees his son, he'll calm down. I'm just like, he will, but I wouldn't put it past Randall to go and kidnap the son. <laughs> I really wouldn't. <laughs> so she was just like, I'll protect my son and I'll do whatever it takes. And I'm just like, Alex, you're not going to harm the baby. It's like, no, you're not going to harm the baby. You're not going to give the baby up. Oh Lord, you're going to move in the middle of the night. What about your other kids? And that's what they're alluding to. It's like, Alex, don't go and abandon your other kids now. You do have two other kids. But she stopped them before you even got to there. So I'm just like, okay, Alex, we'll see what happens. Uh, 
we have Marcy and Brad. Again, again another drawn out conversation monologue. Oh yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Another drawn out conversation monologue between Ramsey and um Ramsey between Brad and Kelly. And essentially what happens is Brad falls asleep while they're watching a movie. And so Kelly tries to go and put comforters over him, put a sheet over him, and he's still awake. So he goes and has Kelly snuggle with him. Not Kelly, I'm sorry. Oh, Marcy snuggle with him. And Marcy's just like, you know what? You know what? Um, no, we can't do this. We can't do this because it feels too good. And they both talk about how... This is where we find a little bit more about Alex and uh, why Brad is possibly open to going back to her already, which we already knew. It's because of the fact that he found out that Alex's father, Rusty, he wasn't just a bigot and a racist. He was also a molester, a molester, a pedophile, and molested Alex and her sister, and so... When Marcy heard that, of course, Marcy's still pissed, so she's just like, oh, okay. But she was like, okay, I get it. Because Marcy this whole time has been trying to get Brad to go back home. Because she knows that Brad still loves Alex. So, that was just more fuel. And he was like, why do you want me to go back to her? She's just like, I know there's still love there. Um, Randall's completely cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, so there's nothing there for us. But you two can actually make it. So that's why I want you two to su succeed. I'm like, oh, okay, Marcy. Okay, so Marcy's just like, you know, I'm going to go in the other room. You're going to go back to your wife and work it out. And if not, you can always come back here. And I'm going to, he was just like, you better lock the door. And she's like, huh? Yeah, because I might sneak in there. Who knows what will happen? Because at the end of the day, since, uh... What's her name? Alex was sexually abused. She wouldn't allow me to touch her certain places. And she actually cried when we first had sex after we were married. And all we did from that day forward really was just missionary because that was what she was comfortable with. So sex got stale and it got stale for both of us. And then I just got uninterested in it in general. And then it also ended quickly. So it makes sense that... You know, when I slept with you, I felt alive. I haven't felt alive. The last time I felt alive was before I was with Alex. And I guess it makes sense why. So then, at that point, I'm thinking to myself, Okay, Alex, you had sex with Randall because Randall was coming on to you. And you were sexually deprived. And Randall, he was rough. So I'm like, wait a minute now, Alex. Wait a minute. You couldn't do that with your husband, but you could do that with a total stranger. What? Were you thinking, oh, this big black man? And she was probably thinking of her father the whole time. In the sense that, see, you violated me for so long, but now I finally got the power back, and I'm doing something that I know that you couldn't stand. So after that, we get to the hospital, and Tina is there. Of course, she's still checking in on Pete, and she has the camera set up, so no one's going to mess with Pete for now. You have Ben waiting outside. She just gives Ben this look like, isn't it? <laughs> That's what she gives him uh, this look of. And Alex, of course, Alex, who's Ben's friend, the police officer who's Ben's friend, he goes to the hospital, he gets there, and he's talking with Eddie. Of all people, he's talking with Eddie because he's trying to go and get in with Eddie. Because um, Eddie was like, what are you doing here? It's like, I actually do night shifts at the hospital to make extra money. And Eddie was just like, you do this to make extra money? No. You need to do what I do to make extra money. It's like, so what is that? It's like, can I join in? I've actually wanted to join in. And you know, Eddie isn't that stupid. He's not stupid. He's just big-headed and an ass. And But Eddie's not necessarily stupid. So he sees that Alex can't be trusted. Alex definitely looks like who would want to just get in. Just so that he can say he um, gained some type of power struggle. And uh, expose Eddie. So Eddie's just like, nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. You know, maybe if you prove yourself, maybe if you quit this and start doing some other things, I might take it into consideration. But right now, I don't trust you. I don't trust that look. You look like my partner right now, Lucius, Lucian. And so I can't have that. So I never put two and two together that this is probably like the only big major hospital or the best hospital in Atlanta. And Eddie gets in the elevator. The elevator door opens up. And guess who's in there? 
Julius! Julius is in there! You should see Julius. So Julius is just like... <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you, Jesus. This is amazing. So Julius is just like... You know what, Eddie? Eddie. Eddie. I'm here. And Julius is just like... You know what? <laughs> Eddie, 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 I'm, I'm going to stop you right there because... I know you're saying all this stuff, trying to be big and bad, trying to say that I'm just a drug dealer and that, you know, even though you know my father is going to die soon and I'm essentially the next him. And he was like, yeah, you're not really the next him. You're just a drug dealer and you're just cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. And I'm still going to be in control. I'm still going to have people firing on you. And uh, Julius was just like, oh, you mean how you were shot in the chest? Well, next time, it's not going to be a chest. It's going to be the head. And you're not going to be able to recover from that. And you know what's going to be even better? My father's going to be dying very, very soon. I'm just like, uh-oh, are you going to go kill your father now? Are you going to go kill a father now? And once he does, <laughs> you're one of the first people. You're one of the first people. I just need you to know. I just wanted you to know. <laughs> so... I was just like, and Eddie, Eddie didn't say anything. I was like, oh crap, is Eddie shook? Is Eddie shook? All right. Julius goes and he talks with his old family friend who's posted up out there. And remember, Tilda was just like, we cannot trust him. So you need to go and get security for his old man. And so he talks to them. It's just like, yes, I already know about Tilda. So we can all stop this. I already know what's going on. I just want to see my father. I want to give him this candle. All this stuff. You know, it has the saints on there. So it's like, all right, you're cool. You're cool for now. So he goes in there and you can see him getting frustrated. He picks up that pillow. And at first I thought, oh, maybe he's going to stop. But no, he goes and tries to strangle his father. Try because I doubt that he was successful. Please like, comment, subscribe below. Let me know if you think he was actually successful. I'm thinking that maybe the security in there, because of course his monitors were going off, probably went in and it was like, yo, what are you doing? And because it's his son, they're not just going to go and have him arrested or anything like that. But Julius needs to calm down just a little bit because I know it's grimy that his father left him nothing, but this is why his father left him nothing, because he'd probably go and get himself killed or worse. Please like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Come back next week.